an eight-hour drive to Sydney. Gotta catch a plane in the morning. It's too bad you got a split. Waves are gonna be awesome tonight. Tell me about it, man. I know, but the old man, he already sprung for the tickets. Can't argue with that. Did you ever, uh, did you ever find that mangy mud of yours? Nah. I'm sure he ran off and found a mate or something. All right, all right. <laughs> I'll right, see you man. next month in Baja. Definitely. You drive safe, huh? All right. Check for ID. His name's Charles Williams. Local? He's American. American? Bad end to a surfing holiday. Let's get out of here and call the CDB. Touchdown in Los Angeles. As for the rest of you, I've turned off the seatbelt sign now that we're past the bumpy weather. You're now free to move about the cabin. But I'd keep the breakdancing down to a minimum. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, for the first 20 times or so. First class bathroom, my friend. First class? Could you get this kid some help now? Sir, here you go. Maybe this will help.
we'll go in there. But we should wait till then. Could be out. Could be. More up at the top then. Yeah. When you double them. Alright. Alright. Found something. Look here. He took a Atlanta Icelandic from Sydney to Los Angeles. There's our boy. Nothing like free booze. You want one? You fly first class often? Hell yes. As long as somebody else is footing the bill anyway. I'm a private security contractor. Gibby Smolak. All right, Betchville. So you're like a bodyguard? Well, uh, kind of. How about you? I'm a photographer. Have I seen anything of yours? Faces. That's my thing. Very nice. Disease Control, Los Angeles. This is Dr. Kayla Martin. This is ATC patching through a call from Flight 182 with an onboard health situation. Stand by. Yeah, can you run this? We got Flight 182 incoming from Australia. We've got major symptoms on board. Captain Salter wanted to be on the safe side because he got the memo about the birth. Yeah, no, that's, that's good. The first thing you need to do, avian or not, is separate him from the rest of the passengers. We did, as best as we could. What's his name? Ames Smith. He's having trouble breathing, and he's coughing up blood. I'm going to put you on speaker so you can talk to my colleague. He's going to ask you a couple questions, all right? Hi, this is Dr. Ratner. What are his symptoms? He's got a terrible fever. He's got the chills. He's having trouble breathing, and like I said, he's, he's coughing up blood. Okay, Lindsay, tell your captain that we'll have the CDC response team meet him at LAX and have that doctor on board stay with him, okay? I'll call you back in 10 minutes. All right, thanks. Let's round up the local team and tell them it's just precautionary. Dr. Sarkowski, call on line three. Sarkowski here. Hey, it's Dr. Martin. We've just been notified of a sick passenger on flight 182 from Sydney. He's febrile hmm. and vomiting blood. Sounds like shock lung, you agree? It could be. All right, meet that plane. Alert the Australians. We'll get Los Alamos working on simulations. I want to be apprised of all developments on the hour. On the hour. Yes, sir. Ratner, CDC LA. Yeah. Yeah, could you hold on just one second? Hey, it's the Aussies. What was the name of the kid on the plane? Ames Smith, why? <laughs> You're going to be doctors meeting the plane. You're going to be fine. Please, tell my parents that I'm sorry. You're going to tell them yourself when we get to L.A., okay? Just promise me. Sydney to Los Angeles. Flight 182, over. 182, operations, go ahead. Operations, we need to report a death on board. Just had a very sick 19-year-old boy die. Could be a virus, flu, or something. You suspect a biological agent, or was there a pre-existing condition? All I know is I have a plane load of passengers who wish they were breathing the same air. 182, please change your heading to 0210. 
following emergency medical protocol, you are being diverted to runway 25 left. Ladies and gentlemen, we have been in touch with the Centers for Disease Control. And as a precautionary measure, we have been rerouted to a secure runway. Don't worry about the folks meeting you. Transportation will be provided for them if it is requested. I want to prepare you for what lies ahead. We'll be circling until they give us the okay to land. Once down, the CDC will come aboard and instruct us on all matters concerning your safety. I know this has been a rough flight, but hang in there. We will do all that we can to get you home as swiftly and safely as possible. Hey, Kayla. What's your hurry? They're rerouting the plane to a secured area. I'm putting it in quarantine. You were? Okay, but two men, dead dog, a couple of dead birds doesn't automatically mean a pandemic. Well, what's the worst that could happen if I overreact? Doing too much can mean freaking people out and that can kill a career. You might want to keep that in mind. Okay, so how ready is the emergency response center? Well, it's a work in progress. I mean, some beds are in. If we push okay overtime, maybe two, three hours, we can get it up and running. Okay, open it. We're gonna need the city's approval. It's their operation. The feds haven't given them a penny for it yet. Call them. Are you sure about this? No. But what happens if I had to react, huh? Well, I mean, if it turns out to be major, then doing too much, that could be a career wipeout, too. <laughs> well, thank God I can count on you for comfort and support. Yeah. Well, I mean, if things go south, there's always the ice capades. And although I love visiting my friends and relatives in Mexico, Los Angeles is now my home. It has been so good to my family. Both my parents have good jobs now. And one day, I'll graduate from college and be a doctor. I hope you grow up to become my doctor, Belinda. Last year when I ran for mayor, people would ask me, what is Los Angeles' greatest asset? Well, it is our people. It is our children. I'm sorry, but I have some city business I have to attend to. But our school superintendent, Barry, can answer any questions you might have regarding our initiative. Have a good day. That was wonderful. And you, Barry, thank you. Hello. Oh, she's my daughter, the one who just read. And you must be a very proud man, Mr. Uh, Ruiz, Roberto Ruiz. And yes, I am. I'm sorry the mayor has a pressing engagement. Excuse me. It's a pleasure to meet you. It was great, everybody. Thank you. Okay, we're out of here. Let's go. You more show. No, 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 no. Let's go. Dr. Martin, Chris Ventress, airport manager. Yes. Remember me? Of course, of course. I have a car waiting outside. Oh, great. So what's the flight status? Uh, should be on the ground in a few minutes. Okay. Um, we need to lock down the plane. That's a big step. I know. Excuse me, Dr. Martin? Uh, yeah, just give me a second, okay? Sure. Thanks. Agent Whitlock, FBI. What's the story? What's the agency's interest? Well, for starters, finding out why the plane's been rerouted to a secure runway. There was a suspicious death on board, so we're holding everybody until we can figure it out. There's no way. I have a federal prisoner on that plane I have to pick up. Well, you're gonna have to wait like everyone else. Wait, doctor. Put me on the guest list. Well, you're gonna have to suit up. CDC is making calls. choice. Hello? Kelly? It's me. I know that voice, Troy. Don't do this. Just tell him I might not make it tonight, okay? Oh, no. Look, I don't have time for this right now. You never have the time, but that's why we're divorced. Just tell him I'm sorry. Don't, please. I'll make it up to him. And Kelly. What? Try not to make me out to be the bad guy, please. You're doing a pretty good job of that yourself. Tower, we're in final approach. We should be wheels down in 30 seconds. Security. Can you help them? Uh, I'm clearing them through as we speak. Okay. Yeah. Tour He's now. gonna get it through. Okay. Okay. Now. We got company. Yes. It's the mayor. 
faster we get those teams in place. The sooner this aircraft is built off the isolation of that, we need to be in the game a half hour ago. We followed him to LAX. He drove out onto the tarmac. How often does the mayor do that? I got a visual on him. Ted, I gotta go. Uh, please, can I have everyone's attention? We need everyone seated. We're expecting the CDC to come in any minute to talk with us. Thank you. D'Alessandro's down there with a bunch of people. Can you see what they're saying? Let me see. Nope, still can't read lips. If we break it, we own it. Who's Dr. Martin? I am. This airport is city property. Understood. However, technically, it's CDC. Don't give us technicalities. You opened up the city's emergency response center without even consulting my staff. Well, actually, I have the emergency authority here. You have the authority for nothing unless I okay it first. I just wanted to be prepared for the worst. I appreciate your concern. But the next time you want anything from this city, you go through my office. Understood? Mayor, why do we continue this conversation inside? Find us some place to talk. Sure. Follow me. Okay. Here we go. Come on. I need to get suited up. <sighs> Come on. The cell still doesn't work. Big deal. Maybe there's no service on this runway. Yeah, people can make phone calls from the middle of Borneo, but not LAX. Whatever's going on here, they don't want anybody to know. We need to speak with your passengers. Excuse me, everyone. I'm Dr. Kayla Martin. This is Dr. Carl Ratner. We're from the Center for Disease Control. We're wearing these bio suits only because it's protocol, not necessarily because you're in great danger. Now, the first thing we're going to do is remove and test the body of the young man who died on your flight. And buses are coming to take you to a safe place while we wait for the results. Well, where's that? An emergency center is being opened as we speak. I got an important business deal closing. Sir, your family and friends will be notified, of course. But until then... Why don't you unjam our phones so we can notify them ourselves? Yeah. Folks, the airline and the government have given CDC the authority to do whatever it thinks is reasonable to protect us. The sooner they do their jobs, the sooner we can all go home. Doctor, back here. I was treating him. He was a very sick young man. didn't I? I'm hoping you win next time. If it's about last night's polls, I've seen them. It's not the polls, Governor. What then? Something's going on in L.A. Something's always going on in L.A. My problem, child. Air Atlanta Icelandic reported the mysterious death of a 19-year-old boy on a flight from Sydney to L.A. today. And they've landed the aircraft at a secure runway at LAX. What? But are we talking about some kind of quarantine situation here? Possibly. They're keeping the passengers until they get clearance from the CDC. Well, then we'll wait and see what the CDC says. Agreed? Agreed.
right, excuse me, everybody, if I could have your attention, please. We're going to disembark the plane by seat assignment. Two reasons. First of all, we want to keep track of who you are. But secondly, we want to know where you were seated in relation to the young man who passed away. Now, he's called our index case. And your proximity to him may eventually have something to do with what kind of treatment you'll receive, if any. Now, we're going to start with rows 9 through 20. 9 through 20. Thank you. Fine. There's time for everything, right? Yeah. Straight this way. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lindsay Mastrava, flight attendant. I was with him when he died. Thank you. Excuse me. Sir? Yeah. Hi, could I get your name and your seat assignment, please? Pete Sampson, 10 A and B. And you, sir? He's with me. Edward Vicente. I'm with you. Let's go. File to the bus. Thank you. First bus. What's my name? Troy. Watch your step. Right this way. I got bad right news. Right to the bus. Don't come dressed like that and tell me you got bad news. CDC's got a lot of regulations like we do. Federal agency, you know. They're not going to let me take him off your hands. What do you know? For real. If it's a flu, they got stuff you can take if you need to. That's all. On the bus, big man. OK, exactly where in the Constitution does it say it's cool to treat us like this? Why don't you do something about a tough guy? You bet I will. You'll be shackled and carried. Do you understand? I'll remember this. Yeah, so will I, sir. Get on the bus. Let well, me finish the luggage. Everybody, listen up. Foxhoven and I are going to start right here at Ground Zero with the victim. The rest of you, I want to get the food and the garbage off and incinerated ASAP after you get the samples from it. What about the baggage? We're just going to have it inspected and returned to them as soon as possible. It should be fine. And the cargo section doesn't share any airflow with the passengers. Yeah, that's my understanding. All right, everybody, let's get going and be really thorough, okay? By the book. He does. It's just that sometimes he doesn't always know how to prioritize. Mom, he's an FBI agent. He should know better. All I'm saying is maybe you should cut him a little slack. I'm on a vantage point on the north side of LAX, where a little over an hour ago, we began to see individuals in bio-containment suits entering and exiting an isolated aircraft. Those bio-containment suits usually indicate a level four threat which applies to bioterrorism or an infection situation. We've also witnessed an unidentified body being removed from the aircraft and being placed in a biohazard container. We don't have any information yet as to the person's identity or cause of death. All I can tell you is the mayor is busy getting exactly the information you want. When he gets it, we will call I you. I just want to make that perfectly clear. Okay? Ken, you will call me first before you announce something, right? 
Melissa, Melissa, I've got a call coming in. I have to you go. You will call me first. I have to go. Right. It's that Channel 8 reporter, Melissa Lowe. The woman's relentless. I know. Well, the CDC hasn't said anything yet. You don't want to be out front on this. I'm not hiding, Ken. We ran on a promise of transparency in government. I'm not taking that back. I understand. I understand, I do, but we don't want to be worrying people unnecessarily. People start dying, Ken. They're not going to find it unnecessary at all. <laughs> Handler, listen, my cell's been down. I just wanted to uh, make sure that you confirm my 1 p.m. for tomorrow. Sure. It's at 1.15. Outstanding. By the way, I heard about your flight 182. Is everything OK? Yeah, I heard about that flight. No, it wasn't mine, though. No. I took um, Qantas. Yeah, last minute change. Listen, here's the deal. I need you to call me tomorrow at 1.15 exactly. Tell me we've got another offer. All right, that you close the deal quick. No problem. Talk to you then. Fast. No baggage? on Thursday. But mom, trial's in a couple weeks. Uh, I can't be there to pick you up. I have a presentation in La Jolla. Great. I'm sorry. Well, I guess I'll just ask Aunt Kayla to come get me. My sister has a lot on her plate right now. I think she's just gonna be too busy. She's never too busy for me. Excuse me, those of you waiting for flight 182. Yes, sir. I know you deserve an explanation. At this time, I can confirm that an incident has occurred on Flight 182 that prevents us from having the passengers contact you yet. What happened? Your questions will all be answered shortly. In the meantime, we have entry passes for an airline lounge that's located nearby and has coffee, sandwiches, and TVs. We have staff there who will assist you in any way they can. We need answers. One more thing. Is anyone here to meet Ames Smith? Ames? Oh, my god, Ames? That's us. Please come with me. Do you follow me? We have to go to L.A. Why? Has the situation changed? Not yet. But consider this. Giuliani's national profile went sky high after 9-11. Yes, I, I remember. And if this turns out to be a big deal, you'll want to be on site. I suppose you're right. You know I'm right, Governor. D'Alessandro's an ambitious man. He'll use this to beat you or try to beat you. That's what I thought you said. Henry. When I got into politics, I thought the job was to govern. I was wrong. But I don't have to like it. Lillian, your job is to govern. My job is to make sure that you keep your job. Please tell us what happened to our son. Uh, would you guys like have a seat? I want to see him now. Look, whatever it is, you have no right to keep him. Mr. and Mrs. Smith, your son passed away on the flight. I'm so sorry. Are, are you sure that it was Ames? What are you talking about? It's not possible. He's, he's young. It seems that uh, he suffered from extreme respiratory distress. We're not exactly sure. We're asking the passengers who were seated around him. 
I'm sorry. I want to see my son. I'm, I'm sorry. Everyone's been quarantined. I can't do that. No, I don't care if everyone's been quarantined or not. I want to see my son. Please. Let me see my boy. This is, all. This is as far as we can go. trying to figure out, so. Oh, please. Oh, please, I want to know. We think he contracted a viral infection in Australia. Oh, Bates, I'm so sorry. Later, when you know things calm yeah. down, I'd like to see what you have set up here. Absolutely. Okay? Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. You can go. Make sure that entrance is secure. Make this way, people. In there. Can you see the fire? Go through here, gentlemen. Right through here. Please have your passports and IDs ready. All right. If you want to make it inside, whatever you do, don't look back. You look. I'm sorry. All right. I'm going to go check in our guests. Excuse me, who's in charge? Is there anyone we can ask a few questions of? Uh, yes. I'm Dr. Kayla Martin of the Los Angeles Center of Disease Control. I can answer a few questions. Melissa Lowe, Jake Laramie, Channel 8 News. Can you confirm that this is a bioterrorism attack? We can't confirm that. Is it avian flu, then? We're not sure. Uh, excuse me. Hello? Hey. You look like you're in trouble. I could use some help inside. Yes. I'll be right there. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm needed inside. Um, but I can confirm it's a young white male that died on flight 182. Our protocols are now in place. Someone else will be outside to answer more questions and give you a full update. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Sister. 
Grace. Richard, how are you? Good, thanks. How's the job working out? Great. One of my fares gave me a $20 tip. Oh, that's wonderful. You know, I found a nice little place to rent. Pretty soon I'll be able to move out. Oh, I'm so happy for you. Sister Grace. What's this for? It's time I started giving back. Thank you. <coughs> now go sit down. We've got some beautiful tomato soup. basic areas of isolation. This one we call area one. These are for people who haven't been exposed. Street clothes are, are fine. Over here, down the hall and through the doors, we have area two. Those are for people who have been exposed but have no symptoms. That's gowns, masks, and gloves. Up the stairs and through the containment doors, we have people who have been exposed and have symptoms, people who are sick. The ones who get the real bad news. Yeah, those are full suits. The first thing we do is a triage, so we can figure out where everybody goes. You planning on staying long? Oh, we hope not. Excuse me. Go for Troy. Hey, we got area two pretty much secure. Great. Hey, you got a head count for me yet? Yeah, we might have a problem. What? We've got 184, they have 185. I don't know if it's our mistake or the airlines yet. Are you sure? Kidding. I have to cross-reference from the airlines and our own counts. But first, you've got me designing a room plan where people are housed by seat number. You have any idea how complex that is? When do we have it? As soon as I can. What is it? Masks on there. Masks. Hang on, mask. Oh, it's please. just a filtration breach. Test. All right, people, calm down. It's just a test. We're testing the biosecurity oh, breach. Relax. Stand down. After all we've been through, you're just gonna leave me here like this? What am I supposed to do? Tell you what. Get used to solitaire. Samson. All right. He tells me one thing, another guy says something else. Nobody really knows anything. I mean, my buddies don't know why I'm in here. Come on. I feel fine. There's nobody sick here. Whatever. You should be in front of the camera instead of behind. I used to be, then I hit 30. If you don't mind my asking, why are you doing this? It's what I do. Can I take your picture? Why would you want to do that? For your family. I look a mess. You look great. Come on. Come on. Smile. Kayla Martin. Hey, it's me. Brooke, sweetie, I, I can't talk right now. What's up? Well, I'm out with Lisa and Becky, and Becky heard from her brother all about that weird stuff that's happening on that plane, and she says that we could all get the plague. You tell Becky it's not the plague, okay? Well, I told them that you would tell us if we we're gonna die or something. Sweetie, I have to go right now. I'll call you back later, okay? Okay, talk to you later. Bye. Richie, how'd you do? <laughs> Crazy busy out there. Oh, let's hope it uh, keeps up. We're heading out for a double. <coughs> hey, you okay? Yeah, I just got a scratchy throat. Oh, hey. Yeah, have some of these. Hey, thanks. I was wondering, uh, can I borrow 20? I got nothing to make change with. I'll pay you back tomorrow. No problem. <laughs> thanks. Yeah, no problem. Hey. Hey. 
You get any sleep? Yeah. Okay. What's that? We got eight folks showing symptoms in an isolation. Started a month therapy with the Tana flu. And you wanted to know about the autopsy? Yeah, what's going on? Well, if you want front row seat, county coroner's on his way. We're starting at 45. OK, I'll be there. You sure don't waste any time? Excuse me? My boss just told me the CDC requested FBI security. It's been assigned to your team. Oh, that's me. I hope you don't mind. It's fine. As long as we're sending my partner's still here, I'm not going anywhere. Dr. Martin. Oh, oh, great. Thank you so much. Sorry. Took me longer than I thought. If you think our bureaucracy is bad, you should see the airlines. It's bad news. We really have lost one. Are we sure? Yes. His name is Jack Hendler. He's a real estate agent. Where does he live? Brentwood. Send out a team. Actually, I want you to go with him. On my way. Thanks. Ready to take a look? Absolutely. The major treat, Mr. Smith, here is a four alarm. Rapid onset of respiratory distress with fever, combined with blood on a plane with almost 200 passengers. That would get my attention. These lungs, they, they look more like a bloody steak than normal tissue. What's the priority for your pathology, guys? Body fluids, tissues, blood samples, fixed and fresh cultures. Now, this is a problem. Come on this side. Oh, healthy lungs are supposed to be pink and fluffy. He's only 19. No time to abuse himself enough to do really big damage. It's like he bled from the inside out. Broke three ribs with that cough of his. Your timeline is right. This is one of the fastest progressing diseases I've ever seen. better to do? I don't even like the guy's movies. <coughs> no, I'm not coming to the office today. <coughs> no, I'm fine. It's just a cold. Yeah, I'll talk to you later. Kayla! So, there's no sign of her missing passenger. He's not at the real estate office, he's not home. What? Yeah, Hendler's soon-to-be ex-wife was there. He's been staying in one of his properties till he finds a new place. She has no idea where. I, I told her that he might be sick. It made her smile. Okay, I'll call the mayor's office. We'll get the police involved. Sounds like a plan. press under control. We have a media frenzy going on here. Sure you want to do that, sir? Well, somebody's got to do it. Yeah. Okay, sir, it's your call. Right. That's him. Uh, can I have your attention, everyone? Yeah, Edo, Atlanta CDC. Dr. Hi. Hi. Carl Ratner. Yeah. I'm Dr. Max Sikorsky of the Centers for Disease Control. I just arrived from Atlanta, but I've been in constant contact with my L.A. staff, so I'm up to speed on the situation. And I'd like to make a few things clear. I think you're all overreacting. This is simply a cautionary investigation. All due respect, Dr. Sikorsky, the media didn't quarantine a couple hundred people. The CDC did. The point is, you're trying to make this a bigger story than it is. Wait, we're hearing rumors that this is avian flu. Can you confirm or deny that? We do not know that this is avian flu. Then why the quarantine? When we have identified the cause of death of Mr. Smith, we will either let everyone go or move into an actual quarantine. Excuse me, you're saying that this isn't a quarantine? I would prefer to call it a preventative action. Now, responsible news coverage should make it clear that there is absolutely no need for public panic. If this isn't a contagious disease, then by definition, there's no problem. And if it is, 
we have taken the appropriate actions to protect the public. But what's the cause, then, if it's not avian flu? Any number of things. Such as? Ross River virus and dengue fever. What's now, don't general? write that well, down. Well, you asked for examples. I gave you examples. I'm not saying that's what it was. Now, you, you people in the media, you have everybody expecting bird flu. But there are plenty of other diseases out there, believe me. Are you prepared with a vaccine if you need one? Vaccines take months to develop. This is something new. The chance that there would be a useful vaccine on the shelf right now is small. Now, don't go off writing that we're defenseless here the way uh, you people are inclined to do. Dear God, what a train wreck. Whose idea was it to put him in front of a news camera? He's the guy calling the shots at the CDC. Get me Mayor DeSandro on the phone now. If this is some new form of influenza or bird flu or something else, the first course of action is to prevent its spread and then to contain it using antiviral drugs like Tanaflu. Governor's office is watching the press conference. Doesn't sound too happy. <clears throat> Governor Shaver. Mayor D'Alessandro. How are you? Well, I'd be better if I wasn't watching the CDC blast the media on national television. I know, we're watching it too. Yes, but I don't want this shameless display to be misconstrued as our position. Our stance needs to be one of firm leadership. I agree. I'll speak to Sarkovsky myself. Do that. We're getting reports that people are buying up supplies of this antiviral It's all about big profits for the drug companies. Just proves the government's in bed with them. They've been bleeding us dry for years. Don't you ever get tired of talking to yourself? Never. I'm my own best company. I bet you are. I've told you everything you need to know. Wait, Dr. No, wait, wait, wait. 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 Wait, wait, un portavoz del Centro de Control de Enfermedades ha declarado que el centro de emergencias será el lugar temporal de cuarentena para los pasajeros de la línea. Hasta ahora no hay ninguna información. Es up, man. I'll be right back. <laughs> Just in case, huh? What you're gonna want to do is get a specific antigen screen. Yo, two swallows. Yes. Starts with a cough. Next thing you know, you're gonna be puking up blood, my friend. Oh, Samson, Samson, Samson. Just remember to stay on message. Stay on message. Stay on message. Mr. Mayor. Right here, sir. Mr. Mayor. Sir. Mr. Mayor. 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 Hey, guys, just give me a minute. I know you're all here because you want some answers. And quite frankly, so do I. In a few minutes, I'll be meeting again with the CDC authorities, and I'm confident that the situation on Flight 182 will be handled responsibly. I am your representative, but I'm also your friend. And as your friend, know this. I will hold your welfare and your trust as sacred. I promise. Thank you very much. Issue a statement offering support to the city. Tell them that you are ready to call up the National Guard if needed to maintain order. <laughs> but these people are going to be looking to me for answers, you know? I don't want to threaten them. You're only doing what's best for them. Henry, did you see any riots on television? Because I didn't. But if I start calling up the National Guard, we'll start them. I don't want to panic, people. We wait. In the meantime, get me that Sarkovsky character from the CDC on the phone. I need to know everything 
firsthand. Yes, Governor. I can tell you this. The Smith boy's autopsy was inconclusive, but it has shown us what this virus does to the body. Now, we're keeping close watch on the other passengers. I have my best team on this, and I'm confident we'll be able to find out what causes this virus before the situation escalates. I will keep you informed. I hate politicians. Excuse me. Dr. Martin, Dr. Sikorsky, the mayor will see you now. Please. It's mayor. This is all fine. Yeah. yeah. It's Dr. Martin, whom Dr. you've Martin. met, and this is Dr. Sarkowski. Mr. Mayor. Dr. Sarkowski. What can we do for you? Do we have any idea what we're up against medically? Yes, we do. Have a seat. Thank you. I'll give you the short version. The autopsy demonstrates the young man had ARDS, or shock lung. It's usually seen in influenza pneumonia or other infections. The speed of this illness, which resulted in death, is remarkable. And it indicates that it's mutated, or very rare, unique virus. The virus enters through the respiratory system and then goes into the lungs where it attaches itself to receptor hooks on the lungs lining. It then moves inside the cells where it, it kidnaps the genetic factory and duplicates. Then the cell bursts and the process continues. All the while, the individual who's infected is infecting other people and the process and cycle is continuing. So they have to show symptoms before they're contagious? That is our present thinking. Can we contain it? Well, we were trying to do exactly that when we were summoned here. Well, then I suggest you get back to your job. Dr. Martin, thanks for the explanation. Please. Agent Sampson? Yeah. There's a possibility you're contagious. We're gonna have to move you. I'll think about it. That wasn't a request. Hey, Sampson. Over there. What's the matter? You don't look too happy to see me. I didn't ask for the help. Like I really want to be here. Listen, man, I'm fine. Doc's orders, big man. Please, Agent Sampson. I've already eluded some of the specimens to pull out proteins, messenger RNAs, and genes. We are loading our libraries of microarray chips while we are doing some NMR to begin seeing the structure of the creature. The bottom line is you can only look through libraries of recognized pathogens, right? It's easier to look for something we already know than it is for something new, yes. Anything else? If we find similar structures between fragments of the RNA, we might be able to reconstruct the likely virus. Any positives thus far? Too early, but here's what we have so far. This is the avian flu. And uh, this is what our young victim had. It's not a match. Exactly. We've got a thousand libraries cooking. So we might be able to identify conserved domains and perhaps start building a model. Well, if the index card is any indication of this infection, we're not going to have a lot of time. And pray that we get lucky. How you feeling? Like hell. You know what ticks me off? Vicente. Bastard looks good. It's not your problem anymore, Pete. You're a patient now. Be a patient. You hang in there. Like your nuclear waste or Whoa, something. Hang on. 
Doesn't every society have the right to protect? Hello? Aunt Kayla? Hey, I, I was just wondering if you could give me a ride home from the ring. Oh, honey, I'm really just kind of crazy right now. Um, where's your mom? Can she give you a ride home? No, she's in La Jolla. Well, is Lisa there today? Um, yeah. Can you ask her mom if she can give you a ride home? Sure. The Today Show is showing pictures of you from last night. You sounded smart. Thank you. Everybody's talking about it. I know, this flu can be kind of scary stuff. Not to me. I know if there was a real problem, yeah. you'd tell me. I would. Um, sweetie, I've, I've got to go. Oh, real quick. I nailed the triple this morning. I knew you could. I'll call you later. Okay, bye. Lisa? Lisa? Uh, you need a ride? Uh, yeah. Is this your uh, first time in a taxi by yourself? Yep. And I do have mace, mister. <laughs> Don't you worry about a thing, honey. I'll have you home in no time. Thank you. <laughs> Buckle up. Here are the latest details regarding the Riptide virus crisis. Officials in Australia have raised the death toll to 14. And in Asia, reports are now coming in of four suspected cases in Japan. Meanwhile, several positive test results have been announced in Paris, Amsterdam, and Berlin. Health officials are focusing on curbing the spread of the disease. I remain confident that we will be able to contain the negative effect of the disease. Listen, um, now's not really a good time. I just need a minute, Kelly. If you're worried about Gil, I explained it to him. I didn't editorialize. About what a crappy father I am? You said it, not me. I just thought I'd drive him to school. I already have a ride. Hey, buddy. Listen, I'm, I'm so sorry. I, there's a lot of stuff going on right now. Uh, Troy, Frank, Frank, this is Troy. This is awkward. Good to meet you. Yeah. Troy, can I uh, talk to you for a minute? Yeah. Hey, I'm going to be late. Just, Just a minute, sport. sport. Listen, that's a uh, hell of a boy you got out there. Yeah, I know. I know it's not my place, but. You're right. It's not your place. And let's get something straight, Frank. I am Gil's father. You're just a guy sleeping with his mother. Troy, that's enough. Okay. Lindsay, 
I know you're having trouble breathing. So we're gonna put a tube down your throat. It's gonna be a little uncomfortable, but it's gonna help you breathe. I'm gonna take this off now, okay? the H3N7 virus, or unknown virus. Now, here's an example of how quickly it spreads. We have found that it depletes the immune system in two different ways. How so? Some of the people's immune systems have slowed the replication of the virus down, as compared to how the virus infected Ames Smith. Well, that's good, right? No, not really. Although it seems there are two kinds of reactions to the virus, one faster, one slower, the end result is still the same, death. Considering our one rogue passenger is still out there infecting the public, with a ripple effect, we can hit critical mass, making this uncontainable in just three days. CDC efforts in Los Angeles and around the country have become focused on finding a cure for the influenza virus. While vaccines offer definitive protection from the flu, Daddy, why won't they show me reading my reports? Okay, the people on the airplane. They'll have it soon. But I'll be at school. Honey, I'm recording the whole thing for you. Don't worry, okay? All right, I gotta go. Where are you going? Oh, I'm meeting Alan and Carlos at the National Guard post, but before I go to work. Love you. People ask why God has brought us to this place, this time, why Aim Smith was taken. I don't believe in a God who plans all events. God has given us a beautiful home on earth, but he's kept it a struggle. It's because that struggle makes us human. And it is by being human that it's so we can reach No one showed. So I say to you, Lauren, we Lord, did. to look to the divine for your strength, Comfort. There's a maxim that suggests that with every curse, there's a hidden blessing. And I pray that one day you find whatever that blessing may be in this tragedy, and it brings you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Hey. Hey. How's it going? Well, I got a call from a girlfriend at County. She said their ER's packed, so it's UCLA's and St. John's. Pretty much anyone who has a cold thinks they have the flu. Oh, yeah. You take a few letters out of pandemic, you get panic. I stole that from one of Skrakowski's lectures. You can hold down the fort. Do you have a choice? Not really. Hey, I was just actually coming up to see you. Anything? Captain Salter died three hours ago. He was a diabetic, and his immune system was probably compromised to begin with. But now we've got 29 symptomatic, 18 critical. How's Lindsay? Flight attendant? Yeah. She's not doing good. I want to see her. <laughs> Stay outside. She flatlined. Dropped out of nowhere. One milligram of epi. Come on. Come on. Nothing. What's wrong? 
Well, Dr. Ito hasn't been able to identify the virus, but we know it's not avian. So, we have a mutated virus that seems to move faster than avian. And if it's more deadly, too. Sir, we're losing people here. These are the people who received the Tanafla? Yes. Well, they aren't going to work for everyone. You have others who aren't on antivirals who aren't getting sick. We shouldn't wait, sir. We're only talking about a couple hundred people who we know have been exposed. It's not a supply issue. If everybody starts now, we split them between the Tanaflu and the Catoxyl. We're treating them like guinea pigs. I just don't understand. Why not give them both meds? Because we need to know what works, and we need to know certain. So what am I supposed to say to the families of the ones who have died? We gave them the wrong meds? It's the only way, Kayla, and we both know it. Torino. It's great to see you. You're on fire as a murder, man. What are you about it? You ready to take a look? Yeah, let's do it. You roll one of these? Yeah, I used to have a 30-footer. Married? No, divorced. Ah. Girlfriend? Yeah, absolutely. Outstanding. Wow, this is sweet. So what do you think? 600-mile range. Top speed of 30 knots. Sleep six. Full radar GPS package. That's 41 feet of good times, my friend. She's a lot sweeter than my 30-footer. <coughs> you know what they say, size counts. You got that right. You know, I'll bet she would love this. Would you like to take her out on it? I know I would. <coughs> <coughs> you OK, man? It's just allergies. Please, go ahead. <coughs> wow. I talked to the estate. Yeah? They're looking to sell everything fast. They want to sweeten the deal. I thought we could put together an offer for the mansion that includes the yacht. You like getting the yacht for free? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Excuse me. Yeah, handler. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, you're kidding. Oh, boy. Yeah, OK. All right, thanks. I appreciate your call. What's up? Somebody just put in an offer. Really? Don't worry. It's through my office. I'll put you in first position. So what you're telling me is I got to make a decision right now. It's your call. My accountant doesn't want me to go over 10 mil for the mansion and the boat. Tell me you can swing that. Try to make it work. Mayor, Los Angeles may be your city, but the entire state of California is my responsibility. Now, I want to know what's going on down there. Governor, when I know it, you'll know it. I had a word with Dr. Sorkowski. With the CDC? So did I. We caught your speech yesterday. I liked your approach. Thank you, Governor. Let me know everything. Keep me updated. I want to know every detail, hour by hour. She's going to show up unannounced. She's going to want to take charge, you know. Oh, I know. We'll deal with it. Yeah, well, let's just hope this thing doesn't get too out of hand. Party! <coughs> hey, Mr. Henler. Hey. The police were here this morning. Oh. They were looking for you. Ah, uh, parking tickets. No, it was about the plane that was quarantined. I told you, I wasn't on that flight. I took Qantas. Must be some sort of uh, computer screw up or something. First of all, if I was on that plane, how could I get off? And second, I'm honestly a little hurt that you think I would lie to you about something like this. <laughs> Give us a hug. Oh. Uh. Grab everybody, bring them to my office. We are going to crack these open. Hey, come on. The king is back. Yeah. I have a little announcement, ladies and gentlemen. A colleague of mine once said, there is an ass for every seat. And yours truly has just filled one of the biggest. Guess who just closed the deal? On the $10 million John Ullman estate? Ta-da! So none other than Michael Torino. The producer! And yet, Mr. Torino has graciously invited me to attend the screening 
<coughs> of his latest film. It is definitely not the H5N1 strain that we expected, but what we call now the H3N7. Now, instead of antigenic drift, where our population has some immunity, this is antigenic shift, where our population has no immunity. I'm afraid this is a true pandemic pattern pending data of its morbidity and its mortality. Well, we now have 62 passengers all showing symptoms of the disease. They're all on antivirals. How many fatalities? Eight. I've got 10 in free fall. They could be going any minute. Any word on our rogue? No, he's still out there. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Thank you very much. You are going to love this movie. Let's go over there and make my picture look pretty, all right? Tori Milliken's not here. I don't see Tori Milliken on her way. Okay. Michael! Michael! This is fantastic. Congratulations. Jack? Who's this guy? This is my real estate agent, Jack Hendler. Uh, you okay, Jack? You don't look too good. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. <coughs> Just about your screening. Good. <coughs> Somebody call 911 right now. Checking in. Right. Kayla. Yeah. We've got Handler. Oh, that's great. Yeah, he's on a respirator now. Uh, there's one other thing. We got a call. Someone who's symptomatic but won't come in. Uh, Sarkowski thought you might want to check it out. Uh, you know, have Dr. Fox open go. The man's a taxi driver. He worked the airport when the flight arrived. Okay. All right, tell Sarkowski I'm on my way. All right. I can go ahead and isolate. Give him this and tell him. Four o'clock would be great. Thank you. Uh -uh. You're welcome, sir. Building permits are up. Real estates are holding. Tax receipts are solid. Now this. Found the guy that ran away. Endler? Dead? No. How many do you think he infected? I don't know. He walked around for two days. Could be in the hundreds. Only in L.A. We've been through riots, fires, earthquakes. We've always come back. We'll come back from this, too. This thing blows up on us. Would you want to live here? Today, Mayor D'Alessandro announced that the lone unaccounted for passenger of Flight 182 has been located and is now in the ERC. The passenger's name is Jack Hendler, a Los Angeles realtor at Bellwood Real Estate. He collapsed during reception for a private screening of a Michael Torino film. If anyone has been in physical contact with Mr. Hendler, it is imperative that you call the ERC at 310-555-1234. It is possible that you may have been exposed to the Riptide virus and need immediate medical attention. He's right down there. I'm worried sick. Please help him. He's a good person. Don't worry. God bless you. Mr. Greeley. I'm Dr. Martin. I need to ask you a couple questions, if that's okay. Can you tell me when you first started feeling sick? A couple of days ago. And you're a taxi driver, right? Yeah. Have you been to the airport lately? Day before last. <coughs> Rock?
cut the lights. Down there. Got it. Be ready for anything. He's gonna be heavily protected. Ain't gonna help. Let's go to work. Coming with us, Doc. Call it medical insurance. <sighs> Wish we had more time, sweetheart. Let's go.
and busted him out, killed Agent Horvath and a security guard. What? Yeah, and they took Sarkovsky. Oh, my God. Kayla, 38 patients just walked out the door. Ellie just got turned into a hot sub.